I'm going to go through an example of Dirac notation using a two-slit experiment as an example. So let's consider a situation where we know that we have emitted a particle from a source. So I'll draw the source here and we'll assume that we've emitted a particle um, and all of the information that we know about it we're going to put into a label psi which we put inside a ket and this information will include the energy and the momentum, possibly the spin of the particle. It will contain the information we know. Now we're going to want to detect that particle so we will put in a screen at the right hand side of the experiment. Uh, this is the detector and I will mark in yellow the point on the screen where we are going to detect the particle. This is going to be a position x and so we would write that as bra x. Therefore the probability amplitude which I'm going to write as prob amp for the particle to reach x is going to be written as ket psi, which is the state of the particle after emission, bra x, which is what we want to know, which is of course psi of x. And the total probability would of course be the squared modulus of psi of x. Remember that psi of x is a probability amplitude. Now we're going to introduce some slits. So I'll draw in a slit here and a second slit there. So we've got slit 1 and slit 2. These are designed so that the particle has to pass through one or the other. If we were to put a detector onto slit 2, then we could ask ourselves what the probability amplitude would be for the particle to pass through slit 2. And in this case, again, we have ket psi because that is the state of the particle after emission. But in this case, we're going to put 2 inside the bra. So we have ket psi bra 2 as being the probability amplitude for the particle to pass through slit 2. Once it's passed through slit 2, it's going to go on to the screen. So we can ask ourselves what the probability amplitude would be for the particle to reach x. Let me just rub that out. Sorry, I made a mess there. The probability amplitude for the particle to reach x after leaving slit 2. In this case, what goes in the ket is the fact that the particle has passed through slit 2, and what goes in the bra is the fact that it's going to reach x. So finally, we can ask for the total probability amplitude for the particle to reach x and pass through slit 2 via 2. And in this case we're going to have, we start off with the particle in state psi, it goes through slit 2, so we have ket psi bra 2, um, but then we want the particle to leave slit 2, so that's ket 2 and reach x, which is bra x. So that is our total probability amplitude to reach x via slit 2. We know that the particle has to go through either slit 1 or slit 2, so we could say that the total probability amplitude to reach x is we're going to have x 1 1 psi which really I should have written from the right, plus x2, 2 psi. And that will equal bra x ket psi, or psi of x. So you see how we've combined probabilities, how we've combined bras and kets, and in every case what we know about the state of the particle goes into the ket, what we want to evaluate, or what we want to know goes into the bra. I hope this has been of some help. We will use two slits in future lectures um, and in future webcasts. If you have access to Feynman's lectures on 
Physics, Volume 3, where he covers quantum mechanics. You can take a look in there because he discusses this kind of thing quite extensively.